Thanks for joining me today, Cody. Uh, ahead of Fight for the Fallen on Wednesday, AEW hot on the heels of two nights of Fighter Fest. Thank you for joining Talk Wrestling. First of all, man, first things first, bit of housekeeping. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm really well. i particularly happy with uh, the Fighter brand, which is just a a year old you know, moniker for a, a special event and to have it to have been a success when we did it in Daytona and then to have it be a success doing it now uh, over two nights, uh, Clash of the Champions style and, and doing it on free TV and doing it during this pandemic era. I was really proud of uh, the roster. I was proud of my, my match and I was, you know, very, very happy. There's always work to be done, but very happy. I mean, and we're talking about Fight for the Fallen that's coming on Wednesday night. Uh, I believe uh, people in the UK can get it on Fight. Uh, you obviously are coming up against Sonny Kiss, but before we get into that, I believe that you've uh, AEW has done some cool work to uh, raise funds for, in response to COVID-19. You've got a couple of initiatives, uh, charity-driven initiatives, I should say, coming out of that. Do you just want to touch on that and how important that's been to you? Because um, it feels like AEW has handled the pandemic era, especially well. And, uh, the, you know, the transparency with the fans has been well received. Well, I mean, I'm really happy with how, how we've handled this this pandemic. And, you know, every week you find out something new uh, about what you could be doing better or what you are doing well. And uh, Doc Sampson, uh, who's our, our chief medical uh, member, has been really strict. He is not a... Uh, I, I like to say he's not a pro company doctor as far as he's a, he's a pro. Well, it's hard to put, basically he's the type of doctor that will not let anything slide. Sure. Uh, and, and that's the type of doctor I think you want heading up uh, your team. And he, he's as rigorous as the CDC guidelines are themselves. And I, I really like that uh, making and enforcing it. And as far as the, the uh, charity element of it fire for the fall in the first time you, you did this you know charity that was uh helping out with gun violence in the local florida area and we had assumed this one would be you know something as well charitable and tony and his dad uh the con family went ahead uh prior to fight for the fallen and donated a million dollars uh, to the local COVID relief that is there in the Jacksonville area of Florida. And it was relatively quiet. And the, I appreciate that, uh, the, the fact that it was not just some PR uh, box Absolutely. check. Ooh. Yeah, it was, it was genuine. And very few people even know. He did this, they donated this million dollars. And then they the same charities that received that donation are the charities that are part of the t-shirt initiative, the shop, AEW.com, that t-shirt and those, uh, those proceeds going to COVID-19 relief, uh, within the Florida area, which helps, you know, uh, flatten that curve there in that area. And hopefully that flattening of the curve really spreads across uh, the nation because the South is always a little bit behind, uh, in, in how we uh, handle things. I'm being, you know, from Georgia, I see it myself. So cool. very proud that the show represents something charitable. Well, speaking of uh, what the show represents, uh, we've seen, I saw your reply, in fact, on Twitter to a fan uh, commenting on you facing Sunny Kiss. Uh, yeah. Your TNT title reign thus far has been pretty fun. I don't know, I'm sure you are aware of this, being statistically driven as AEW is, but since the loss to MJF back in February, you've won 11 straight in singles. So quite the run for the champ. And, and uh, obviously four AEW TNT title defences in the book. And they've all been really fun. You know, Jungle Boy, Mark Quinn, Ricky Starks, uh, and moving on to Jake Hager that you did at Fighter Fest. Uh, all different, all in their own different way. How pleased have you been with the run with the title thus far? And uh, why, I guess, did you want to face someone like Sonny Kiss in the next instalment? I've been I've been particularly pleased. I mean, I'm a a very big critic of me more than I am my opponents. And uh, last week, you know, I, I experimented with Jerry Lynn as I had him as my my coach and someone who put an eye on the match himself. And one thing, it was great, you know, to have Jerry monitoring my match with Jake Hager. But it was also it was also felt like I was a trainee again after because. <laughs> 
he didn't stop with an endless amount of things he thought could have been better. And that's, that's great that everyone at AEW should be accessing the wealth of knowledge you have in a guy like Jerry, a guy like Arn, a guy like Dean, Dustin, our coaching staff, uh, all the way top to uh, top to bottom. Uh, so I'm always critical of myself, but it is what I set out for it to be so far. Um, and that's in terms of different, uh, that's in terms of a variety, uh, whether it be a, a guy who had, we were talking about a $4 in his bank account, uh, when he came to Jacksonville uh, to be part of Dynamite, that being Ricky Starks, and he impressed uh, Tony so much, he left there with a job. And that was never the intention of the open challenge. Uh, it, that that really wasn't it. And I'm, I'm glad it became a, you know, a little side and sub story to it. Um, so I've been very, very happy. Uh, I know a lot of people wait for the the, the title itself to be finished uh the current one i have is just steel um it's just steel with paint on it and i i think it's adorable but it's it's <laughs> not what it's supposed to look like and you wait for that nickel plating and that silver plating and that will really uh really hopefully you know give it this whole new pop but they'll be hard pressed to get that one away from me because it just represents this crazy time in the world uh with sunny kiss you know i don't accept i don't um uh, determine the open challenge uh, opponents it's it's Arn and it's Tony Khan and it's an open challenge it's not it's not determining you know from the ranking system or the top five you see every you know Wednesday it's an open challenge right. I had considered this a great opportunity to actually finally see what Sonny Kiss is all about uh, we've seen him in tags and I've seen it you know singles with Peter Avalon as far back as the original fight for the fall and uh, but Sonny is an incredible athlete and we wanted to have incredible athletes as part of this roster. Uh, the, the most high tech, uh, if you could put it that way of wrestling styles. And I want the world to see that yesterday got a little, I got a little hot under the collar because of the well, amount of right, right, so, Rightly so it should be, yeah. that, should, that shouldn't be tolerated at all. No. And it's, and it's one of those things I talked to Sonny about it yesterday. I said, I said, what would you, you know, what would you like me to do? Would you, would, I would like to say something, but I don't want it to, this is, you know, your call. And he was supportive of, of me saying what I said. And it, it, that was one incident. It's amazing to see so much of that still existing in the world. But if we can be a bright spot on Wednesday nights, uh, that is showcasing the best wrestlers, no matter what their lifestyle or no matter what choices, no matter what their, no matter, if we can showcase great wrestling amongst what really is today's world, which is incredibly diverse, nothing uh, is like it was. And if we can do that, I think that's a positive and Sonny's a, a great wrestler. And I'm just looking forward to hopefully the, the audience uh, seeing a totally different side of Sonny, not unlike they got to see with a uh, jungle boy in the very first TNT title defense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think like they've all been fun. And this, this matchup sounds like one that could be exactly in the same vein. Um, the, what I will say for AEW as well, in the recent months, like you said, I mean, well, like I say, in fact, WWE had to let a few people go. But AEW have been some, bringing some people in. And it's not just ex-WWE guys. I mean, Brody Lee's come in and done great. And FTR, of course, are here now. But Brian Cage, uh, who's got background in Impact, Lucha Underground. And like you said, Ricky Starks too. Um, talk to me about how those guys have settled in and um, you know, you learning as an executive as well, looking for the right types of people to come in because I think we've spoken about before as well that it's crucial to not just pick up anyone who has some name value. You've obviously got some criteria in your own mind. Yeah, I think when you, when you look at picking somebody up for AEW, you really want to look at what they have left. Uh, and not what they've done so much as much as what they have left, like what's in the tank and where the passion level is at. Mm. Uh, AEW is an artist space. Uh, admittedly, there's some wild west to it. There is areas where structure is, is not found, but what's rewarded instead is an artist being an artist. You uh, painting the picture, how you would paint the picture, you playing your music, how you would play your music. And, Th those individuals, he, you, you mentioned Brody, just the tip of the iceberg on what uh, Mr. Brody's able to do. 
FTR had this outstanding match at TakeOver with uh, DIY, it feels like 100 years ago. And after that, the, I feel like they never genuinely got the chance to show out again. And we all lived off of that match. Mm-hmm. Like, gosh, they could be so good. It, within within two weeks, uh, they've had so much pressure on them, and they've they've delivered immensely. They're they're the best tag team in the world right now. Um, and then you have Ricky Starks and Brian Cage, and and just Ricky Starks was somebody who had picked up a little bit of steam with uh, what he had done in the NWA, but also what really impressed me was his brand building skills outside of a brand. He, he was out there. Uh, with no money, with just his connections and his work ethic, uh, making vignettes for himself, uh, doing high-res promos, having the best presentation as far as a wrestler, all the classic things that guys in the territory days, they'd bring with them to the territory and hope they got a gig, and Mm. he did. Brian Cage is a a prime example of I've I've put my trust uh, in the other executive and management court. It's not not my cup of tea as a as a wrestler uh and since he's showed up on dynamite i've been proven wrong every week uh whether it be what he does on dark i really enjoy uh watching brian i really enjoy watching him and taz i love taz together so i, I leaned in I, I leaned into the other guys and and trusted them and i've been happy with what uh with what i've seen i get a very luger uh harley race vibe from taz and uh and Brian together, and that was one of my favorite eras of wrestling uh, during that period where Luger was up against, you know, whether it be Ron Simmons or individuals like that. So I, I, I get a great vibe from uh, Brian Cage now. I like watching him every week. Absolutely. Um, you're speaking of families, I can't help but uh, bring to mention the teases or the rumors of uh, like a, a new modern day four horseman. What do you uh, make of 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 the teases, I guess, and the reaction to that. And, and really, the do you think it'd be an uphill climb to kind of pay homage to that? Oh, I, I think, you know, we see that. Certain things are a little organic things that happen out there on, on planet wrestling that you don't plant the seeds for. Uh, no one's planted, really. I mean, maybe a few baby seeds, but those mm-hmm. baby seeds have grown into this speculation about a four person group and then there'll be people who specifically mention the the four horsemen i don't think you can ever do the four horsemen um that's that's an entirely that's and that's ambitious that's uh braggadocious uh and very likely you'd have the most uphill battle ever you're talking about there were wrestlers on the caliber of a Ric Flair, a Tully Blanchard, uh, and the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, and whatever variations of the the horsemen you're looking at. But yeah. those guys bell the bell, uh, and uh, in real life, and on the microphone. I mean, just the total package of total packages uh, as a unit. And that's why it was so special. That's why it still lives on to this day. Uh, I I think in this case, I. I love flirting with with some of the concepts that are out there because my dad and my family was always the the antithesis of the four horsemen their biggest Absolutely. rival was uh was my father and now one of his biggest rivals is genuinely one of my closest confidants and coaches and it's really a different career than I had envisioned uh but I love having uh, double A there, and I know Double A has had some conversations with Tony Khan and with FTR, uh, and I know Spears has had conversations with FTR. So there's this kind of lingering uh, situation here. Really, the only way you'll ever know if something like that would work is you got to get in there and 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 touch one another and 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 wrestle and and wrestle on the same team and maybe even against one another. Um, that's really the only way to know something like that. So I'm curious to see, uh, like anybody, even though my name's all over it, I'm curious to see where that goes. Mm, absolutely. I mean, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the TV deal that you have here at the moment with ITV. One thing, uh, the feedback that I get from fans all the time is, if they're swayed here in the UK, is that maybe it's easier to watch NXT on BT than it is to either days later on ITV 
or, or going out of your way to subscribe to fight. Uh, don't get me wrong, you still have to subscribe and pay to BT, but you know, in terms of getting it to your TV, it, it would seem like NXT has that advantage. Is that something that AEW plans to address uh, in the near future or down the line? Oh, I, I think so. Uh, I know that, you know, Tony and, and myself, we, we have a really uh, vested interest in the UK. I just, I've always loved the UK wrestling scene. It's why I spent so much time there after I left. Um, so we do everything we can, whether it be with the AW Plus on fights um, or with ITV and our partners there. But one thing that's really helpful is the data that we get. Um, you know, WWE has, what, a 40-year head start uh so a lot of television networks and places uh when they do put their trust in us it's not reluctant but it's almost on a trial basis and mm. you have you have situations like itv and you have situations like tsn in canada where that trial basis has really been rewarded because the viewership is is massive the hunger is there the whole revolution the things we talk about are genuine. So I think it's something uh, we're looking into uh, as far as uh, a potential, uh, you know, maybe uh, not having the delay on the shows. Uh, we love being on ITV. That's where we would prefer to be because they're in so, so, so many homes and such a staple mm. of, uh, of the United, of the United Kingdom. Um, but to your point, you know, we don't want to, we want them to have the best opportunity to see our show. And there's still hopeful plans of us um, coming over to the UK. I know right now with everything going on, it's difficult, but that's still a big goal uh, of mine just, just personally. I know that other people share that goal, but I just think you have to, if you're a wrestler, you have to wrestle in the UK. It's a different, it's a different environment. It's a great learning experience. And we have a lot of young uh, men and women who need to, uh, to learn so i think that situation will only improve that as the brand just grow, grows larger and larger on a worldwide situation a worldwide scale take an example the toy deal um you know having these wonder, wonderful conversation with smiths and uh toy distributors in the united kingdom and thinking about that and and just that that makes my day it gives me a lot of confidence and a lot of hope and i think as a longtime wrestling fan uh it makes you feel good when you know that the product is supported. Uh, mm. It it gives it gives you hope. We've seen so many times where there's been an upstart or just a tiny, they lit the match and then it got blown out. Well, in this case, we were trying so hard to really create this firestorm that is a W and and take it across the globe. So it's something we look at uh, re pretty regularly. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I'd just say that selfishly, if anything, because I want to watch it live, um, you know, as easy as possible. But I guess that the, the takeaway from that is that it's not impossible that ITV will take it live down the road. Oh, de definitely not impossible. And that's, you know, that's something you're working with. TNT is our, our partner and, and our here in the U.S. and they, they, they pay a great premium to have our product on. So you want to respect uh, both sides of the coin. And that's something as far as me and management is very new to me. Mm. Um, I never, I never mind when people yell at me about this stuff online uh, or they hit me with the, Oh, you didn't go to college. The classic uh, uh, BTE joke. I don't mind that I'm growing uh, in the management role. Uh, just uh, a few years ago, not even a year ago, I was on a stage joking about what a WWE title looked like and talking and bragging about our UK deal. And then I get hit with a little bit of hard dose of reality and I'm okay uh, tasting that medicine. That's part of being an adult. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, and I've, I've learned, I've learned, you know, I'm joking about their title. And then in the middle of the world's, you know, global uh, COVID crisis, I got handed little Ruth, my little title. And I know it's not what people expected, but, uh, it's it's all part of being an adult and and learning and I'm learning every day and I, I love going and I love taking these visits and I love uh, uh, basically meeting with all these partners because AEW is really such a partnership with people and once once they get in the room with the actual wrestlers the guys themselves and they can feel the passion of what we're trying to do um, I think a lot of people buy in on it. Just a couple more before I know I have to let you go, um, being the busy management man that you are indeed. Um, first off, did you, I don't know if you heard Conan talking on his podcast, claiming that um, CM Punk was in negotiations with AEW, but he had asked for an extortionate amount of money. Did 
it ever get that far? Is Conan talking any sense there? Wait, what did Conan say? I'm sorry. He said that CM Punk and AEW had been in negotiations, uh, or when he was in negotiations with AEW, he says. But um, that Punk had asked for a lot of money, and that's where the breakdown had came. I I like Conan a lot. Um, he's kind of my uh, you know, my AAA buddy, and uh, he's a, he's a really smart smart guy. I wish I had, I wish I could spend a little more time with Conan. I know I'm getting like wax poetic on Conan, but I think <laughs> I think. He, I think he's really, I think he's a really great guy. As far as that um, negotiations, I mean, everyone heard the infamous, "Oh, well, we got a text." Uh, he got a text from us and all that. Um, yeah, of course there were negotiations, and uh, he asked for a, a great amount of money. And Punk is worth a great deal. Of course, yeah. Of, of Punk is worth a great deal of money. But you also have to, and this isn't speaking to punk specifically. This is just speaking to overall recruitment and what we've learned from wrestling in general. Um, a lot of people think, oh, well, the, these wrestlers are running this wrestling company. These wrestlers are doing everything they can to run the creative and, and the brand and the marketing and all those things. But there are some very smart and conservative, fiscally conservative people who surround us and flank us because this isn't my money at mm -hmm. all and, and and i don't want a situation and i don't like what happened with wcw or even jim crockett promotions where we're thinking we're flying so high uh that we can do anything no like this is a business uh and and we have to turn a profit and the fact that we're able to turn a profit as a company within only two years of being alive uh, very few other companies can in wrestling it's real limited count on one hand who's been able to do that yeah, versus, amazing. versus been able to bleed money. But in that situation, the, you know, the negotiations, I think never got entirely too serious. Um, doesn't mean they won't one day or are, are not, but they never got entirely uh, too serious. I think there's a good relationship there. Uh, I think I have a good relationship with Phil. I, I believe uh, Tony does, um, and I, you know, I'm not sure. Really, when it comes to him, it's not so much about the money. Mm -hmm. It's about are you inter are you interested in doing this? Um, because the price tag becomes a lot more justifiable if you're genuinely interested in what we're doing at the high speed that we're doing it. And again, that's not even specific to him. Just in general, if the mm -hmm. passion is not there, the money is not there. Well, closing here then, uh, I have to say, Wednesday nights are my favourite night of wrestling at the moment. It's just phenomenal, the back and forth between yourselves and NXT. Uh, total transparency here, I'm a big fan of both brands. I mean, my Twitter will tell you that in one glance. The, the I, I believe they're bringing out the best in each other. Obviously, you're having, you have a vested side in this, um, but just talk to me about how it feels to be in that wave of of momentum i guess at the moment on wednesday nights and the clamoring for it because and before we get into the the, the demo discussion or anything like that there is nearly 1.5 million wrestling fans watching wrestling every yeah. week at the moment so for me it's bringing about a great era in wrestling Be, you know having your business hat on <laughs> is it is it hard to um stay in the moment and realize that or are you very aware of of the special things that are going on your side and, and and beyond i guess i think early on it was early on we were looking at it and there's really that specialness about like you said x amount of people watching wrestling on a wednesday night as a big wrestling fan what does that mean to me and I think as we're, you know, now where we're at and then we're gearing towards our next pay-per-view event and we're gearing towards Fight for the Fallen, we really have to put our focus on having uh, the best show because it's really easy to get caught up in the weeds of, well, for X amount of weeks, we beat WWE in the ratings or get into this wild demo discussion. I, If you ever catch me tweeting about the demo please just just <laughs> del delete my account it's not and it's not wrong i respect everyone who's bringing it up I don't yeah, it, ha it has its merits to be fair like you, yeah, we understand I, that you know that is what advertisers seek and stuff like it, it yeah. has its it has its properties i'm sure and i don't make the top 50 that's the thing when people are spamming um all this aw the management core 
Showbuzz Daily, has, who do, they make the top 50 for cable. They make the top 25. We don't make the list. Mm. So if we're ahead of your, if we're ahead of your favorites uh, or, or your favorite show, I, tech, spam them. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to, uh, to tell you. But I think instead of being really, uh, you know, kind of romanticizing the amount of people that are watching, the focus has got to be the actual show itself continually getting better. That's something about Dynamite. There's only been maybe twice where I've thought, I didn't like the end of that show. I didn't feel like we ended better. Uh, than we did last week. Whereas that's the goal is having the absolute best show, wrestling show you could possibly have. Doing it with a disciplined and a non hot shot approach, but also keeping some spontaneity, keeping the fire there, uh, and focus on long term uh, plans and things of that nature, which we've done. And I, I'm so proud of everybody. We, you know, the the Bucks and, and Kenny and, and and Tony, of course, and Jericho has been a really wonderful. A leader um, behind the scenes and on, on front of the scenes and you know then you have guys who are now entering their second year of the company in Jungle Boys and MJFs and they're no longer these freshmen on the varsity squad they're growing and and I just I love seeing that but my focus uh, I don't get caught in the weeds Thursdays are the day that all that data comes down and you look at everything you look at minute by minute did someone tune out here? And then you have to ask yourself, why did they tune out? You have to ask yourself, is it an anomaly or is this a pattern? Are we seeing a pattern? Uh, and that's an area where we have, again, great people flanking us who put this all black and white on a grid for us to see so that we have, to, again, be accountable. If you ain't drawing viewers, it's, you know, we got to at least assess the problem, if that makes any sense. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Yeah. And that's, uh, so that's, that's the day that all, that's the one day that it gets really uh, uh, analytical and then looking into, into the data. Um, but for me, creatively and just as an uh, artist slash competitor, it's really about having the best, the best show, something that people talk about, something that evokes emotion and, and gives them memories and, and brings them joy during this period. Uh, just, just before I let you go, I am going to say you touched on long-term stories there. One thing I love about AEW it are the things like that that you follow and you can feel that they're going somewhere. I, for one, am really, really invested in the Omega and Adam Page um, dichotomy, I'm going to call it, because I don't want to presume this is going in any kind of direction, but I'm very excited for where I hope and think it might go. Um, so I just think that you guys are doing a great job in, in that department. Thank, thank you. I think that's how wrestling uh, used to be done, uh, and whether it be in the territories or in the early boom of the TV era. I think that's kind of the direction it's moving towards again um, in terms of long-term investment and planning and cooperation amongst all. Well, Cody, thank you so much for your time. You've been very generous with us. Can't wait for uh, Fight for the Fallen this Wednesday. Yourself, Sonny Kiss. I mean, it's a stacked card as well. Um, FTR and the Lucha Bros. And, of course, Moxley and Brian Cage. And the Elite and <laughs> Jurassic Express. Man, it's like a pay-per-view quality card. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I look forward to catching you again soon. Thank you. Can't wait till we talk again. Thank you very much.